audio. Have any uh, information? Yeah. Um, you know, the issue that had been raised, which Kim addressed to some degree, but you know, obviously the you know the other entities should weigh in. Uh, would be duplication of effort, um, and what I from what you guys have said, uh, it doesn't s seem to be. You know, from what you know, you you've said. Uh, you know, I, I think you know it. It certainly fits uh, within our purview of, of things to fund because it's uh, all about you know clean water and and uh, you know habitat restoration. Uh, you know, we just need you know there, there are a number of moving parts, as I, I had said in my my note, and um, you know certain individual raised concerns about that and I, I can see why because it is a little confusing because there's the seeding program there's the garden program there's the reef program and then there's things that we are hearing that the Peconic Estuary Partnership is embarking on who they've got a grant to do some stuff uh, you know so I don't know if they are already interacting with you guys or if they're doing something on their own, which is kind of parallel to what you're doing. Um, yeah, let me ask a question here before we go. I just want to make sure that I, I'm clear. What's my deadline? <laughs> you know, I mean, really, when do you want it? When do you need to know? Yeah, I mean, we when we started this process, I think we had our, our time frame of, you know, starting to plan in December, and it's really integral more from a permitting perspective. So if we are going to be doing do you mind going to the oh, oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's just the that initial legwork that we really need to do to make sure we have all the permitting involved. We obviously have consensus within the town, you know, levels of government and, and constables and you know other mm -hmm. users of the bay, just to kind of get solidified on the exact sites that we're proposing to do the restoration. And then there's a little bit of like work that needs to be done with um, site selection in terms of doing all that through monitoring and all that. So all of that would be starting in the spring and ideally the planning, you know, we're, we're doing that now <laughs> for our other projects. So and on the hatchery yeah. side, you know, yeah, we're exactly. already needing to make plans for how much larvae we need of each species and when we need it. So that's yeah. already begun. Yeah, that process. we've been getting emails this week from our hatchery managers and such. So. What are we doing? What are you guys doing? What's the you know support for it versus you know what we can right. do? What's the capacity? So, um, so yeah, it's really the sooner the better. <laughs> when do you, when's your next meeting here? Well, uh, it could be this month. Could yeah, be. the second one. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we'll have. I think Greg will be back, but um, you won't be. Okay, uh, we might or might not. I don't know. Um, you know, we've got documentation, some of which is a little over my head, but we have a scientist here who's going to review. <laughs> um, and then the thing from uh, town of Southampton Councilman Bouvier, who was very supportive and, you know, couldn't speak more highly of the program. Um, I, I wrote to him, I have not heard back from him. Um, uh, just in regard to some of, some of those same questions I asked you, um, which you know, I, I wasn't aware of the potential of this duplication until, you know, the, at the town board meeting uh, or the executive meeting it was. Yeah, I'm just curious, what was the context of that? Because... Um, well, the context really it came mainly uh, from the town board. Um, okay. You know, that they were aware of other efforts by other groups, I guess, namely the Conic Estuary Partnership, and even within, you know, they were aware of, of there was a separate uh, overture from your group for this garden project. Uh, Edo, really Tiana Bay. Yeah, the other, it, another Kim in your group. Private. Right. It, they want to, you know, put out some flopsies. Um, you know, I look at Tiana Bay, it's huge. It's not, it's not even going to come close here. Um, but, but I was thinking, you know, not only duplication of effort, but also how much of the resource do we put over to these efforts versus then not recreational, not commercial fishing, you know, not, you know, other things that can't happen there because now we have a community garden. Now we have your efforts. I don't know in how many different places. So it was all those kind of 
And then, oh, and then it was a casual conversation <laughs> with Pep that just said, wait, wait, they're doing what? And a little surprise on that, on, I felt, on their part, and a little bit of, not chagrin, that's too strong a word, but just, can you put us in the loop? kind of uh, question. I'm like, sure, you know. Of course, uh, yeah. So just, uh, you know, some background. We work very closely with the Bikanagashri yeah. program. And we're actually, I could say very emphatically, especially in the Bikanagashri, we're the only organization doing eelgrass restoration. So yeah. um, Bikanagashri program sometimes funds us to do that work. Yeah. And that's great because that, again, supports their CCMP. Yeah. Um, and again, our marine botanist, Steve Schott, who heads up that and would be leading this effort, coordinates very closely with Joyce, um, was actually going to be contacting her this week. I'm not sure if he got to before this meeting or not, um, but he sits right. on and chairs the, you know, subcommittee that discusses all of this. So that's usually the time that we bring forth our project. There's no formal, you know, we don't submit our every proposal. We submit to towns and other entities to the kind of extra program, but of course, if stuff is going on in the mechanics, they, yeah. they want to know about it because it supports their overarching right. goals. And so we do report our numbers, whether or not, you know, we're um, being funded by them, we would eventually have them in the loop. But again, at this stage in the game, you know, we're not even there yet. This is right. just a proposal. Right. So <laughs> if we get funded and start doing stuff, obviously. But we don't, you know, that's so helpful because we don't know the yeah. order of business. Oh yeah, so, we have a know, great relationship with them yeah. and we have, you know, for years and again, um, even with the conservation mooring project that didn't happen, that right. those funds ended up getting channeled to us actually. And I just submitted that final report. We were able to, instead of doing that project, did a planting um, of eelgrass actually in the um, kind of waters between Shelter Island and Sky Harbor right. um, for that. So again, we're we're very much in tune, you know, with them and the projects that we do. And is is eelgrass restoration? James has asked this question, I think, but is it working? Yes, yeah, so that, I mean, yeah, that's what goes yeah, along with the, all the monitoring yeah. and everything that we have to do beforehand to really pick areas that we know are going to work. And then that's the other kind of overarching theme of this is that this is, we want it to be the kickoff to a, a long-term effort. So we're seeing with all of our restorations, whether it be shellfish, eelgrass, you know, coastline resiliency projects that we do, if we're visiting these sites regularly, obviously annually just to monitor, see how it's doing, but also adding to that effort, that's when we see the restoration success. So yes, in, especially in the Eastern Peconics and in Shinnecock, we've seen a lot of success with our restoration. Um, and do you try to pick sites where eelgrass has historically succeeded? Exactly. Yeah, you got it. So we'll see areas or even where it is existing, and we obviously won't mess with that, but the idea is we site it nearby so it could kind of leapfrog its way to fill in those areas. So we, we're very, um, site selective with that, the kind of program actually funds us to do the long term monitoring network of all the eelgrass, historic and um, current, within the estuary. So we have a very good idea of where all the current stands of eelgrass are. Um, we're actually working with them, hopefully, getting a contract to do um, some ground truthing. They fly aerials to try to really see where all the um, eelgrass is, and then our divers actually go out to ground truth that and see. Um, if that's actually there. So again, we, we have our finger on the pulse of the resource and uh, with that knowledge and the decades of experience my colleagues have in it, we've been able to come up with the right methods for each area. So depending on the site, if it's more sandy or this or depending on currents and whatever, we usually use our tortilla method. If it's very rocky, we have a rock planting method that we literally just put shoots <laughs> under rocks and then it coalesces that way. Um, and in this case, in cockles, we're interested in doing kind of a hybrid of both with our um, buoy deployed seeding. So we would actually be seeding the bottom and also doing some adult transplants and seeing what works best. And again, this is all leading to what we're hoping to do, which is establish what works in the area and then just hit it every year. And that's, you know, again, at Tiana, at the site, you know, a little bit south of here, where we've seen the su success and that site we've been doing for six years now. It's awesome, and I think we sent the videos. You can really see mm -hmm. it's filled in the pipe that we had marking where we did our first planting. You can't even see it; it's a whole meadow now. So it's it is. It's really, and if it's not working, we're out there monitoring and know that, and could kind of adapt as we manage or say, listen, I think the temperature is too high now here for good, or whatever the situation may be, and it's obviously not waste resources and try to do it somewhere else. That's been fun. I have a question, and maybe the town board can answer this. Um, this seems to be a multi year undertaking. And so if we were to give you the money for this particular year, my only question and my only fear is, is like, where is this money going to come from in the future? Good. And so, <laughs> you know, I hate to open 
this up and get started and then it crashes because you know the town can't afford it or our committee can't afford to keep you up and running. Yes, no, that's a very valid concern. And again, to keep drawing comparisons to Southampton because it's a very similar format that we're using there. So for example, in the two years now we've been doing that project, we have local funders, we have sponsorships of people actually sponsoring these cages of spat on shell oysters. So we are coming up with other even private fundraising methods to keep it going at least to the level that we need to do those annual plantings, even if it's not as high of a scale as this, the idea is this project, just like the big half million project down there, um, kind of kickstarts that, gets us set up in terms of finding the appropriate sites, getting stuff permitted, doing all the coordination, doing all the community relations, getting you know the public behind it, and then also you know structuring you know that sponsorship, getting local businesses involved, and that's again been a successful model in um, Mattituck, Montauk, and, and Tiana, where we do these back to the base stewardship sites. So did that was also, um, did you do one at um, uh, the Rams Head Inn, or was that back to the, yeah, back to the base didn't handle one? No, the there was something at the Rams Head. For yeah, sure. our spat director. So that's yeah, more with the oyster guys. Yeah, was was there? Oh, like the I know. Thing yeah, and, and Greg was, was there as well. Going. But would yeah. you say like on that like because I I went there, so like that event would be the type of thing you're talking about. Exactly, so right. we're doing a lot. Of Once you establish yeah. that, like the, a site is happening, something. get people behind it, then <laughs> yeah. you can leverage if that. If you build it, they will fund. They, yes. Oh, I like that, yes, I'm gonna exactly. steal that. Yes. <laughs> but that's exactly, and again, it's based on, you know, past successes, and I'm happy to, you know, for more of the back to the base, you know, stories your way to see that, but we've gotten, you know, strong marine Ernie's and, you know, heavy hitters behind us sponsoring, you know, these efforts. So we know we have the baseline of what we could do, what we get with other private and public funding. And as I mentioned, this too is also very good because, you know, a lot of funders want shovel ready product uh, projects. So right. if we could show we have, you know, the first year, you know, under our belt in terms of it's working, our permits are lined up, we just want to scale now. It's that much easier for us to then go after, you know, NIFWIF or, you know, federal funding or whatever it may be, work with the kind of estuary partnership and try to, you know, leverage some funds that way too. So the sky's the limit and we're very good at piecing that together, but it's like this first big heavy lift is kind of what we're looking for the town to support us. But you're basically saying you've got a track record of successful. Correct. Yes. yes. <laughs> you've been down this path before. Absolutely. <laughs> Someone's worried about funding right, it long yeah. time. Yeah, no, we're not going to come back every year asking the town for $200,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And while we're on, um, like, talking about the money, I did want to um, point out I had been reviewing in preparation for tonight, reviewing some of the past meetings that we had attended to talk about this. And I recall some a couple people had raised some what seemed I have like some concerns. notes on that too things I want to make sure were answered right uh, so some what sounded like concerns about how a good chunk of that money we're asking for goes towards salaries that was right yeah. so <laughs> I I know it could be if you sound like oh what is this what's happening um, we're trying to fund water quality not someone's paycheck but um, it's very important to note that we don't have to we're not like buying our many of our materials we're physically growing making them, <laughs> making them. So all that time that goes into now, this time of year, growing the algae that's going to be then used soon in a couple weeks to start conditioning the adult shellfish. And then all that time going into spawning and then taking care of the larvae until they are ready to set. And then after that, like taking care of those baby, baby shellfish as they grow until they're big enough to seed. And then on the eelgrass side of things, so same thing, I mean, yeah. we could assign a number per oyster and say this is how much it costs if it's more palatable to think in those terms, but the, you know, real brass hacks of it is it's it's paying the people to produce that product yeah. that essentially the town Every, is funding. Yeah, everything that's getting put in the water, we have to grow. Yeah, yeah. I think on the, <laughs> so on the notes I had, it was just that I forget who asked it. I don't think it was me, but some people were asking about the salary, like the, the duties of the staff people. It was a little vague, right? That's what mm -hmm. I have in my notes, that it was a little vague on... on yeah, I had individual <laughs> employees would be doing and how that would... Yeah, so I, think, get, I, get I think I had provided um, a pretty <laughs> yeah. significant budget justification that had just that in there. Mm -hmm. For okay. example, even just for the hospital. So, okay, I didn't see what page that was. 
sure, I think it was on that second page there, but you can see an algae technician, so shellfish technician, hatchery manager, agriculture coordinator, our specialist, uh, that, you know, so on and so forth. So it is, when you look at the number for salary, it's only $161,000, which when you think of the eight plus professionals involved in this project, some of them being the really higher level ones that are, you know, helping again with this initial, you know, using their scientific knowledge to select the right sites and helping, you know, through the administrative regulatory, you know, process and everything, you know, that's, that's where it's going, but that's what needs to happen to get the job done. And those are the people involved. So, and also I kind of gave it into context of what the yearly operating expenses for those different things. And you could see, it's not like we're, we're asking you to fund our entire hatchery and then you're only getting, you know, 10 million shellfish or whatever the. No, it's good to have this because this way, if somebody in the public, you know, they don't have access to what we have and what we're passing around. So it's good to just, yeah, I mean, we're here saying that somebody needs to look up what it's at here. So yeah. we're hoping for a summary from the committee to the town board, as well as you guys to show up soon. Um, at a town board work session, you know, to, to, to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. But hopefully not, you know, get a summary and we don't have to go into quite this. Um, yeah, we could, we could summarize this a little bit too because we didn't really intend this to be <laughs> out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> it has, you know, sensitive, you know, budget yeah. numbers and things like that. But we could still make a summary of this that could have that impact to show yes. exactly what we're talking about. And let me also talk about financing. It's just come to my attention. Um, because we're working on another project, that we need to do a project plan for WQI to say, what are we gonna do with the money each year? Um, and we've been just carrying forward our funds and saying, well, we're certainly gonna find a reason <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to spend this money, mostly IA systems, but other things are now coming up. And so now in the next month, we, we probably should and will write that project plan because we're overdue um, by a few years in getting that done. And so why couldn't we at least identify the potential of further habitat restoration? You know, we, I don't, don't have to put a dollar figure on it, but I'm just saying that if you put it in the project plan, there's a possibility that you could certainly come back to us and ask if there's money in the bucket. Yeah, and, that that was terrific. Was and, and Southampton Town has that in their guidance and their formal application. That's already they never asked specific, us to do. Specific thing. Yeah, I know. Just, just look at theirs and change them. Change one is and did you ever, did did we ever hear about a project plan? No, it's no, you haven't. It just came. We just realized that yeah. it covered yeah. the UI, like CPF it, has to do one, but we didn't realize you're this, under the umbrella. And it's never been. Yeah, done. your funds have to go in there with definitely. That's something that we need to develop. Well, what I think I'm going to do is I'm working on it right now for CPF, just just cause it's so overdue that I'm getting nervous. You know, state's doing audits because Fred Field wanted that done of the. The how we're spending the CPF and the WQI money. Well, part of that is, well, are you spending it according to the plan that you develop? But our plan is out of date for a few years. Mm -hmm. never had and the WQI never had one because the CPF hasn't rewritten one since the WQI was created. Mm. So yeah. I'm working on that. And, and so I'm hoping to come back to you guys with a suggestion. Here's a plan, mark up, do what you need to, but at least get it going for you so that um, you have something. So basically, it, it could be something like, where we have a more clear picture of the percentage that can go towards other water projects versus right. just IAs or well, whatever, yeah, or different I mean, projects. Or just coming up with ideas about yeah. what the fund, I mean, exactly. but, but I mean, well, like the it was a chicken project. or the egg thing with us. You know, I'm sorry to diverge. Um, you know, we were sort of the resource to be able to fund projects that people brought to us. Yes. We weren't necessarily advocating Right. projects other than let's get some water stuff going here anybody you know <laughs> like uh, when i first was here and i reached out to jake card and everybody about do you need to like putting drywalls in and yeah. you know all that kind of stuff and, uh, well, this, this really is, beating the bushes to see who needed money yeah, this is but, part of being a pretend town um, you know, um, <laughs> serious, you know, because in other towns they have departments yes. that are saying, geez, if we only had the money, we could do these 22 projects. We don't have that here. We, you know, so we have been. Well, yeah, there's everybody has ideas about what those projects could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if they're you know, the if plan, we only had the money, they don't have to be detailed, they should just be in the plan. You know, right. so if this is already started, I mean, I, I like this be being in the plan, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I would be closely ready to vote on saying, you know, I, I would recommend the way I'm looking at this, you know, because there's a lot of 
I get a lot of sort of reticence from the town board. And, you know, it is a lot of money. Lot. No, just there is a lot of money that, you know, that this is a big ask. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's 52,000 less than the Fresh Pond project. Well, that's still on hold, so we don't know about that yet. Uh, but that, that is something uh, that, you know, is in the same vein, though. I mean, it, it, you know, it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, these have come up more. I mean, when, mm -hmm. when I started, it was all, when I came on the committee, it was 2019, it was all IA. Right, yes. Here we have it. This is what people have pushed us to do. Right. You know, hey, how come, you know, how come you can't spend on big projects like certain people like uh, GG yeah. uh, was one of them who said, you should be not funding the IA system. You know, whatever. You know, like, I think you, the big push was to fund those in the, at the outset, hey, I don't care, just get them in the ground. Mm -hmm. No, and, and now it sort of tapered off, but it may, hopefully it'll pick up again. Yeah. Um, but projects like this, I, th I think th this is great. I'm, you know, and I'm, really I'm, I'm, I'm yes. sort of on board with, with a sort of recommending to the town and fund it up to whatever, you know, and the, you guys decide, well, gee, you know, like we want to, you know, do something different, you know, or whatever it is, you know, I mean, we're just an advisory board, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we, we like to think that our recommendations are way careful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they are. But it's also, you know, it allows us to be a little flexible in what we're saying, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyway, um, if this bus forward, I, I think there's, there's other members of the, of the town board that seem to want to get, you know, that if there can be a specific dialogue uh -huh. between, you know, Pep and you uh -huh. uh, to just say, hey, you know, yeah, this, this what, you know, you wrote is, is exactly the way we look at this. You know, we, you know, you're sort of a, you know, one of our contractors, if you will. That's exactly. Like, that's exactly. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. And we, you, you, you are the boots on the ground and make the thing go that we thought of mm -hmm. or have the money for. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I get that. And, I, and certainly, yeah, I don't want, you know, four of these projects going, you know, to try to compete with one another. <laughs> I want one, you know, that's doing great, you know, and I want to see it expanded to, you know, all the places in Shelter Island that warrant it. Mm -hmm. um, so is PEP supposed to get back to you? Well, I think there was a... Yeah, we could reach out to them again just to alleviate any confusion, because I don't see, again, we hit so many on their, you know, their CCMP deliverables that they, you know, it's their mission to you know, do all those things, this project hits so many of them from education to shellfish to eelgrass yeah. habitat. So and that CCMP, like that plan that is produced every what, five years, 10 years. Um, like I was in the meetings as part of, of developing that because that's how it works as members from all different environmental organizations and agencies were meeting to kind of prioritize what kind of work was important. So I was part of that, those meetings, so the irony is a little bit killing me. <laughs> um, so it's like, but yes, we're meeting. Yeah, like that, that familiarization is, of the process and of the goals. Yes, yes. And, it, yeah. and also just like the contributions of everybody out here who knows is like saying like, all right, these are what's important. This this is what's happening, what should be happening. And then so I, you would know, it be I, appropriate, I like, yeah. you know, to maybe a work session yeah, to I have? Think, I think a work session, yeah. I think you need to come with site plans. I think you do, you know, just at the, at the, at the as soon as we can make this happen. Yeah. We have yeah, the constituency of the, of the Bayman, you know, we're always concerned about encroachment on their. Yes. Well, I did a lot of that initial legwork work in the, right. in the pilot. Right. My pilot year last summer, you know. Right. right. And I think, I think I've spoken to at least one of them, you know, uh, who seems to be their, their voice. Uh, and Tom I, Field? Yeah. Yeah. I have, like, I, we have talked on the phone, you know, like. Right. Yeah. And there's we went, and that was honestly task one when the project happens was to do a really comprehensive thing before we actually do anything. So even if it you know did get recommended for funding, we plan to do that. But if you want us to do a little more of that, you know, beforehand, a little site planning beforehand, I think yeah. might be good for the town. <laughs> yeah, board. we we've we've done you know some degree already, yeah. but doing it with the yeah. town board, I think that's be good. yeah. We just did that initial presentation. We had the map of the different sites and things, yeah. and they had recommended who to reach out to and. Did that and you know, but do you have enough time to do that for before the next work session? Work session was Tuesday. I don't know what was that was like. Uh, 
the, I don't know what the... Yeah. Oh, do you guys have enough time to pull that together? So maybe well, we so, so, so You running. probably have an idea. You already know. Well, yeah. 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 well the, like, the, where the, we're putting all the different... Site plan, like BJ. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah. That's exactly. what you mean, BJ, yeah. right? No, like, I mean, uh, yeah, what's I mean, going where? Okay, so, yeah. you know, in this little section of Paco's Harbor, we plan to... Do X. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we already established that for the oyster reef. That's compiled. Like, so we, we already presented it. And then board. it would just be yeah. a matter of yeah. talking to, yeah, some of the Bayman, like, did it work to put my little scallop sanctuary where I put it this year where everyone seemed on board? Or should we move it? <laughs> so I'm going to ask you guys are going to present at that next work session, then you should probably invite like Tom Field or Marcus yeah, Kasich think, and a know, few other guys. Maybe we get yeah, it's so you're around, yeah. Joyce from uh, Joyce. Yeah, yeah. we get her. I mean, her I think yeah. it would be you know a lot of the the concern yeah. that was addressed to us. You know, it really didn't stem from us. It was, yeah. you know, we we were just sort of tasked to look at it. Um, maybe that could be just all answered. You know. I mean, yeah. You know, in, in I'm one quite room. I'm positive it could. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're in the same room because, jo you know, she's you know, not yeah, going to would say, oh, yeah, this is perfect. You know, like, whatever. You know, and Tom feels right. hopefully would be all happy because you're working towards making things better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, yeah, you can't control the temperature, but, um, yeah. you know, yeah. there's a lot of other things you can do. Right. Give me just a couple of Bayman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mr. King or. Yeah, we need to go. I think Stevie Lennox is there. Yeah, he's. Like more. I have a good um, rapport with Tom and Sawyer. <laughs> Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you think you have time? You know, yeah. Yeah. Tuesday yes. to kind of get that together. And yeah, we could touch base again. My yeah, colleagues, I mean, people, I, 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 I would come. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to Florida on this. All right. And I want that's to all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> is it is the work session evening next year or is it day? Yeah, work session is usually at one thirty, one one thirty-two. That's right. It'll be on Zoom, yeah. yeah. I can, I can okay. That's what I would do. So you can uh, ask you questions, know, yeah. questions and whatever. Yeah. I mean, the only questions I had were about the salary, even though it was my initial question, but um, which you explained. And, um, and then just the, the email where you, you know, distinguished from the path. I think part of the thing is that it was just very confusing <laughs> if you're not in the shellfish business and you don't. Need totally. Yeah, like, the landscape. Like, and it yeah. is very confusing. And not like, to say that you guys aren't out there, but like yeah. PEP, it, probably for the town board members is more well oh, known. Yeah. Like they, everyone just knows PEP. The meet, you know, where Jim Coggan works work. with PEP, has, so it's on yeah. their mind. I think yeah. that's probably why they were just thinking that way. Yeah. Yeah. She's always talking about the aggression show, because again, they do right. a lot of great things to facilitate all that happening. So, but you, when you think that, you think PEP, but it's, you know, Really, Cornell behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, so that's that for explains me. a lot for me. I know, yeah. you know, that's kind of what I got from what you wrote. Right. Betty, okay. what do you think? Yeah. No, I agree. You I know, agree. And after that, I, I would certainly be ready to make a recommendation, you know, that the town board can take as, as they will. Saying, we just take a resolution. So we can do that way to have a public hearing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember we talked. So the end of the month, though, but, it could but, be, right? But if, okay. Like yeah. it's but the end of the month is pretty busy, though. I think. Well, the twenty eighth would be where we February twenty eighth is our next town board meeting. We would set, set the public the hearing, and then it would be like the twenty first of yeah. or twenty yeah twenty first of March. But, so if, but you, if this was in the in the pipeline, if, you, if this was happening, if you guys we had still... some sort of like you know somewhat commit that it was recommended, oh, uh, I mean, uh, an okay, a high yeah, start. Yeah, I mean we yeah. could then just without a contract just at least start and know and plan right, so we can yeah. make it happen. But we're getting dangerously into uh, if we've yeah. been stringing yeah. along. Like technically, you can unless you have the public <laughs> yeah. hearing. You yeah. can't. You can't really say well. It's right. sort of going ahead so, with it sure. because probably no one's going to say anything. <laughs> Right. We would, you know, we would hope. I mean, you know, but if we if we do this right, and you know, we have this meeting at the work session, and right. you know, the players are all there. You know, and the town board is is yeah, happy with the answers. Things at yeah. that. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, the public hearing then is more just the public. You know, the town board. Hopefully, we will yeah. be able to address anything that you, know, you guys have. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. means there has to be. It should be this Tuesday. Yeah. It would be great if it yeah. would be this Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. We're motivated. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, I can be there. Yeah. Great. Um, you can wait. I, I, I can zoom in. Yeah, I'll try to zoom in. Yeah, um, so any other questions that you guys?
have. I mean, I, I'm. No, I'm. Yeah. I, I was in favor of it when it was presented. <laughs> yeah. But we have to be careful because when we're giving away this amount, I understand yeah. that oh, yeah. there are other well, There's no precedent. And again, with yeah, the plan, totally. you know, formally, yeah. I understand it's coming out of left field like, whoa, this is different. But in terms of the science, which always comes up, you guys have that well documented. Yeah. You've had that yes. in the beginning, too, so I'm not worried about that. Unless you've done it so many other times. Right? That's what we're exactly. hoping to stand yeah. on, our, you know, expertise, our reputation, and our prudence. Actually, Greg, way back, like, two years ago, in a spring session, talked about all that stuff before you guys even... Yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And he's a part of this, too. Like, he's funded as part of this, too, to, you know, take his expertise and uh, all the years he's been doing the seeding program, you know, he's advising to some level on the expansion of this based on his knowledge of, you know, what he's been doing, you know, for years and that. But again, that's the totally separate uh, pro program. No, this is a different program. Right. Well, the story that stuck out with me was the porcelain from all the toilets in Manhattan. Oh, they, <laughs> they put the spat on porcelain from toilets. I yeah. remember that story. <laughs> we could bring back that. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm happier collecting shells. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it was amazing. I mean, he did a phenomenal job and to have all the restaurants behind us. The and cheap about you using the junk that's there that was the whole oh, ice anyway yes. so yeah, yeah. we it could was, all go help that. tonight <laughs> well we plan on coming in going to the the go to the cheek cheek and yeah. have bucket shop yes, that's go. right <laughs> but we're just you know we're storing oysters exactly so we're doing our civic duty <laughs> um, just a question about the ongoing funding do, would you see some of your sources i mean does this kind of go into a pool or do you need to get local people on Shelter Island, for instance, to help fund this, and not that oh, they wouldn't. Yeah. But everything. But would you yeah. would you be dependent on just that? No. no. So yeah. the okay. Back to the Bays Initiative, you know, we work throughout primarily the East End, some stuff a little further west and southern, but for the most part, we have these you know stewardship sites and areas that we work okay. and businesses that we network within that. That because there's just a good tie for them to support something that's literally mm -hmm. in their backyard mm -hmm. if they're in waterfront or whatever, but. We do, I do fundraise and, and get grants for the whole initiative. So that's the benefit of being part of it is that, yeah, when we do go after bigger funds to fund all of our sites, this will be one of them. So it is an option, however, if people do want to donate specifically oh, to I mean, shelters. You know, I, mean, I, 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 I think like, that, you know, there could yeah. be sort of an awareness. Yeah. Cocktail party or something. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, Darren at the Cheek had already wants to do that. <laughs> Yeah, the the or, um, you know, at the Ram's Edge, he's into, into yeah. the oyster thing. I mean, yeah. um, I don't know if this was clear, but with the, the whole pet thing, um, now that we've, you know, that horse is clearly dead. <laughs> but what I mean to say is, because because time is of the essence, so Tuesday. So if they, you know, can make it whatever, you know, just a letter. Just yeah, yeah. Emails, so just to, you yeah, get someone from your organization's already been in touch. Yes, yeah, you know, to get to them, you know, so yeah. just. Weigh in, you know, just give us a, you know, a, just like what happened from Southampton was perfect. Great. Yeah. Um, would be terrific because I just, I don't want Tuesday to not happen because right. we can't get that right. player. Yeah. I mean, but they can always zoom in too. I mean, somebody, somebody, somebody could. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Tomorrow, I'll try to get more pictures. That's great. I think that, you know, that's, that's some progress and, I think everybody's getting a better, better feel, feel yeah. you know, what's right. going on. Good, good. I appreciate it. Yeah. So we're trying to do. So I'd like to help help out, actually. Great. And that's a big part of it, too. It's yeah. like community stewardship and involvement yeah. opportunities. So that, that's a really great way to foster stewardship. And I'll, I'll, I'll shuckle for you. All right. Better. <laughs> it's a messy job. You said. I thought we going to do it. Remember, we used to have a process of Dory. I right. know. I we have, have, the yeah. I have dreams. Has it on her list. I have Maybe dreams to bring her back. Yeah. Yeah. Something happening. Yeah. 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 That'd be great. Yeah. 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 We need to get the door fixed. Yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. You know, Salt was thinking about trying to do it, but yeah. they were like, it really should be the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For the fundraising, we could do it at Salt. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you both. All thank right, you guys. Thank you for having I appreciate us. Appreciate your tacity. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> we'll show you again. It had your energy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we'll work on getting everything shored up for Tuesday and have it. Great. Everybody. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank so you. we'll see you then. See you then. Yeah. <clears throat> um,
Well, the Fresh Pond updates, obviously, we uh, are not going to be able to do any voting or anything like that tonight because I have to uh, abstain from anything like that. But we can have a discussion about things that we've gotten in support. You know, you, you guys have seen, seen stuff that um, supports this, you know, short-term harvesting of, you know, harmful algae and toxin producing uh, organisms. Uh, you know, it, it seems clear that it, it does have, you know, a percentage benefit. Even uh, Dr. Wagner has weighed in on that. I don't know if, you know, he didn't written this formal thing, but he did talk with uh, Pio Lombardo and he conveyed it sort of us. Um, Peter Grand is somewhere out. here. Uh, I'm here. And, uh, he um, can certainly, you know, provide some supportive stuff as well. If, if you guys need more, you know, evidence that you know this, the harvesting of this, you know, uh, organic matter that's yeah. you know matting up, especially by the uh, public access, is beneficial in the long term. I, I just want to be clear. So the 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 work on Georgia Capond, he sent that over. Right. That's what we had asked for at the last meeting. Well, he um, sent it. I think I just want to make sure. Yeah. I, yeah. So you did or I did? I th this. Yeah, or, no, I think you you did, right? Yes. I, okay. So that's all. I I right. wanted that. I mean, right. And, and this, this from Dr. Gobler. Um, I, I saw that. You know, was you know unrelated. You know, happened. You know, a few years ago, mm -hmm. but. But may I comment? Yes. So, 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 I, the, so the question was uh, again. You know, I, I really, I thanking the WQI for putting the, the projects into water quality improvement projects, and I think you know Kate and Kimberly, what they're doing is just awesome. I think it's great that we're moving forward on some slightly larger scale projects, and we discussed that at, you know at the last meeting. And you guys had a quorum at that time and approved, but there was a portion, as you know, I'm sure you're all clear, um, of the request that was that Greg was specifically asking: was it for harm uh, for uh, aquatic habitat uh, in, uh, restoration, which is the category under which the uh, WQI uh, money was being granted? Um, so uh, the example that we look to is Lake Aguam, which is similar. The kinds of problems they're facing are ex very much the same as ours. They have this high phosphorus content, and then um, as a result of that, that's fueling algal blooms. Um, and they, that, well, along with the New York State DEC, they developed an action plan for 2020. And if you look at the action plan, it talks repeatedly on very at various points. We could step through it if you want to, although I don't think that we need need to dissect this in detail. Um, the study of uh, removing uh, using an algae har a harmful algae harvester to remove uh, the organic matter from Lake Aguam. The ways in the, they were able to establish that it improved the aquatic habitat. Uh, that's documented both as research and is in the uh, New York State DEC document that we provided. And then the simpler document to read through is Dr. Gobler's statement. It specifically relates not to, we happen to have two different forms of uh, plant material in Fresh Pond, particularly at the public access area, clogging the public access area. One of those is uh, a, a specifically a harmful algal bloom, a matted variety of harmful, harmful algal bloom uh, by the broad name of Lingvia. It's actually Microsera subspecies of that. And then we have um, uh, lily pads that create, uh, that decay and create microcystins, which is a different kind of harmful algal bloom. Um, and the document from Dr. Gobler specifically addresses microcystins and lingvia, which are all kind of intertwined. The stagnancy in the area and the public access area leads also to the um, growth of the, uh, the lingvia itself, a harmful uh, and documented in our specific case, uh, has been toxic algal bloom. 
Uh, so removing all of those, I think we are kind of clearly documenting that you are in fact doing habitat restoration, aquatic habitat restoration. And so it fits under the category that uh, Greg was wanting to make sure that you did fit under. We, em I think that part of the confusion is that we emphasize the health consequences um, and that we were basically just trying to protect people and trying to protect health. And Dr. Gobler also speaks to that pretty dramatically uh, as well. Um, so there is a health, public health reason to go ahead, uh, but that doesn't quite fit under the uh, WQI categories uh, that you're trying to fit into. So just to check the boxes, we wanted to make sure that you had clear documentation that that piece of the puzzle. Now, now uh, the, w, the since we met the la, well, since we just met recently met um, the Fresh Pond Neighbors Association also met. And the community group is quite clear that we uh, we understand that you know the, the cleanup this short term cleanup is on us and that we're paying for it. Uh, so this is the the particular portion out of the uh, you you had gone ahead and recommended that the board uh, allocate one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars to us. There was another which was ninety five percent of what we were asking. There was another six thousand nine hundred that was just simply for the permitting of the vegetative removal, which would then lead to the benefit that, that we're describing. So we're hopeful that that will be covered. The neighbors expect to cover the $6,000 or so, maybe six or $8,000, uh, or maybe well, hopefully it won't be more, but, uh, but then it's on the neighbors to cover that in each of the years until the long-term remediation project takes effect. So, so we're stepping up. We've already put $22,500 in the last three years into keeping this project moving along in partnership with the town. You guys have put in a lot too. Um, so, so we're hoping that that piece can be covered. The annual six to eight thousand uh, dollars. The neighbors are very clear that it's on us. So, anyway, hopefully you'll be able to just add this to the recommendation, uh, town funding. One additional um, item that uh, uh, I believe it was Dr. Wagner brought up that you know, if you're removing this organic material you are contributing in a small percentage, he said, I think it was 7% of reduction of stuff going to the bottom and giving off more phosphorus. So that's a, another thing that is, you know, the change. Yeah. But I, I, I've also heard of the lily pad effect. I mean, right. and I'm not a biologist, but just as a layman, I've heard of it. So I know that that's oh, a it reads, you know, it, it, you know, it's it decay and, yeah. and, and you know, they're pretty we've small. specifically tested for it. In other words, we've gone, you know, in doing our sampling through mm -hmm. the um, Citizen Statewide Lake Assessment Program, we've sent the DEC, we usually send them two samples every two weeks. Um, and sometimes we'll sample the open water and usually that, you know, except, you know, maybe a week during the summer or two weeks during a summer, that's often fine. Um, but we'll sample in, you know, in the area of the lily pads and we'll get microcystins, we'll get toxicity readings, we'll, you know, and that's been over the course of five years, we've been able to document that pretty consistently. So, so Peter, are you aware that um, unless you get to the roots of the lily pads, um, that, you It'll know, you're back. Uh, yeah, yes, no, exactly. we're, we're, we, and we don't intend, we actually don't intend to uh, remove the roots of the lily pads we you know maybe to some small degree you might want to push back the lily pad roots from the public access area but it's actually not our intention to uh transform the uh ecosystem by pulling things up by the roots in general um the harvesting out is a temporary measure it really uh, improves the habitat, it, it reduces the amount of phosphorus recycling into the waters, it has a long-term effect, but it wouldn't have a good enough long-term effect to solve the problem. Every year it will come back right. until the long-term project takes effect and there isn't the phosphorus that fuels the uh, growth of microcystins and lingbia uh, in these areas. So, so we expect to have to do this each year on our dime uh for four or five years until we start to see enough we've knocked down the phosphorus levels uh sufficiently that you just don't you know it's the way it was what i remember 15 years ago 20 years ago which is it remains clear all year long 
Is there a uh, blue gr green algae um, throughout the whole pond? I mean, do you see it? It can green? be green. Uh, well, oh, so, okay. so yeah. Well, <laughs> James can speak just as well as I can to it. Right. I mean, it, it, it when there are these blooms, you know, it can be localized. Mm -hmm. You know, blue green algae, but at times they it could be pervasive throughout the whole pond. So, is there any? Any chance of harvesting all of that out as well, or? I don't know, I don't know if that's, that's a thing that you can grab onto. It that settles out fairly rapidly no, into that's, the bottom. That seems like that's what they do in Agawam. Uh, Agawam they, not deep, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so again, when when what you know when you have a generalized bloom, it's basically something that like appears and in two weeks it's gone. So it, well, less so, than eight right, it just. Pow. And then like two weeks later, we're fine. And a few days after it clears, people can go back in the water and swim. I mean, but no, I'm not recommending anything to anybody. I'm just saying that. Also that's... not like plant material that you can just. Oh, you can't like grab it. You can't, it's versus so, a So you, pressure, would, right? you, you, okay. could, you could conceive of filtering it out, but again, it would come back as, until you got the, it's food. And it's food well, is the phosphorus. So that's what we're going to be doing. Specifically. We, we may get that with the other stuff, <laughs> you know, like when we're when yeah. we're doing the, the main remediation. So, right. So the only thing that was missing from the last meeting was just the permitting funds. That's that's what was left right. out. Yeah. You know, and just the permitting for the short term cleanup work. Yeah. So uh, we would have to put any vote off until uh, I would. It, you know, we very likely will have a second meeting this month. I think. I mean, because of the, the you know, the, the Cornell yeah. uh, Cooperative Extension request. I, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to. Are we going to have a quorum? Well, I don't know. Wait, I don't know what Tui's plan is. He won't be here. I don't know. He's not going to be here. He's gone. Is he gone for the winter or what? And you can't vote, so it's only right. If he's gone, and Greg. And, you know, and you and Greg is not going to work either. I mean, obviously, it, it, we won't have a meeting if there's no quorum. Is there a necessity to be quick about this, or can we wait till March? Uh, I mean, Peter, time. So, so <laughs> I assume that I assume that we're going to go forward with the public hearing around the hundred and forty-seven thousand that was already recommended. So I, they're going to be separate, no matter what. So therefore, um, uh, the it's not urgent. Partly, it's not urgent because if necessary. The homeowners, the, the neighbors organization has agreed to loan the $6,900 on the assumption that it would be refunded. We could get afterwards. it later. But yeah, we it's only have, forward. look, I mean, part of the issue here is just what's the appropriate scale of the contribution from uh, the town and from the homeowners. And, you know, we have $11,000 in the bank right now. So the 6900 and then we don't have a lot of money for the when we actually have, have to do the remediation uh, in June. So, but that all can be worked out and, you know, can all, that we can smooth that out, but it shouldn't be a problem. So I, I wouldn't say that I'm panicked that you uh, can't get a quorum for a month or two. Just we should keep in mind that where the intent is. Oh, sweet. So if you had it on the Tuesday on the 28th, I could... We have a meeting like the next that, month, that, anyway, that, Thursday. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. You know, if, if, it, I, I think maybe, if we can wait on this, you know, we still may have a meeting if we want to try and have some sort of consensus and vote on the Cornell request. Mm -hmm. um, that we couldn't have enough people to do, I think. When does Greg get back? Yeah. He's yeah. gone for two weeks. Two weeks, so. I think, yeah. So we should be back by then. And remember, we can't set the public hearing until the 28th. Right. 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 That's why I was so, I mean, if we needed to, we could, we could meet, you know, the day before. Is, is there anything <clears throat> I was reading in the reporter about the whole idea of Zoom and how we, since we're an advisory committee, we might be able to get exempt. Is there any, any students working on that? Yeah. That's we don't know. Nothing. Our attorney doesn't necessarily agree with Redfield's take on it. Okay. That's where that came from, Redfield. Yeah. Right. Because we don't think no Fred truly understands how our um, you actually because I'm too quiet. Um, I we're not hundred percent sure Fred really understands like how integral our committees are 
as you know, as members of working government for Shelter Island. Mm -hmm. So that's you. That you're a true public body. Yes. Yeah. Right. Taking so, public, you know, doing public business. That's different than yeah. other towns where it's men and men. You know, because they have departments. Yeah, yeah, they have departments who handle things that <laughs> right. are committees. So, and yeah. so. Um, yeah. So anyway, so Stephen's gone to the committee on open meetings, which is an Albany thing, uh, to ask them for a ruling for us. Um, and so I have the feeling this is just to temporary. Uh, so. But it's, it's still, still you know, just to no, it is. I mean, it, it, for every, we haven't had a yeah, setback meeting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Um, all right, so we will revisit this whenever we have enough people to, to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, you'll come up with this plan that we're supposed to weigh in on. And put, have been put into. Oh, yes, yeah, the project plan is called. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to have that to be a discussion on Tuesday if you want to hang out for that. Um, you know, okay. then I'll have a rough draft on it and, you know, hopefully, really bullet points of what we think should go into it. Um, CPF's going to have to weigh in. It's going to be a little bit of time, but I would like at least to get the ball rolling and have something down for you. I mean, I think, I, I think we all agree on. Ooh, you know, it's IA systems, especially in the center, because every IA system that you put in can halt the accumulation of nitrates. And then if you get to a certain number, we can actually start to reverse it here in the center. Joe and Meg have been doing some modeling that's very encouraging. So there's that. So that's some hard numbers. That we're, we're very interested in keeping that going. You know, it's just, and maybe we have to come up with an initiative to get people more interested again. Yeah, Maybe there has to be like a little PR campaign. I think so. I do. I mean, I think, I mean, I think also, you know, we could do a targeted mailing, <laughs> you know, that says, you know, you are in this very special area. And, you know, if you do an IA and we get 42 other people in this special area, we will really impact the quality of the water in a relatively good, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. This isn't 50 years from now. So there's that. Um, then you could also utilize the homeowners associations. Yeah. Well, it, We're starting to consider that in the Silver Beach Association. Yeah. We're thinking about how we can get that word yeah. out to us. Um, this can be in conjunction with our new and more happy form to fill out. <laughs> yeah, right. No, 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 we've simplified the process. Okay. And maybe we have to up the amount. And, 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 and. I mean, you know, there's a whole bunch of, and hopefully the county will come back online. I mean, you know, a lot of this was out of our control. But anyway, also to say Deering Harbor, I think that we all think <clears throat> Bridge Street, if we could, you know, that could be in your project plan, some sort of remediation for Bridge Street. What that is, I don't know if we actually have to identify it. I think we can just put it in the plan. So I, I think we're all thinking right. of the same things, mm -hmm. you know, shellfish the, restoration. The, re the recharge of the eye, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, all those things. Yeah. What to do with the wastewater from the, uh, Proposed septic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway. If you could so, figure that out, then that would be a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll get some ideas shot down, and then you all just fill in. Do you think it's inadequate? Cross out what you think it's wrong. Anything else that uh, you would like to talk about? No. I'm okay. All right. Well, then I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Does anyone have any questions? Questions do we have? Peter and oh, Julie uh, Blaine's right. on. Does Amber have any questions? <laughs> Julie, do you have anything? <laughs> She's on I think I'll say hi, Julie. <laughs> hi, Julie. <laughs> hi, Julie. <laughs> no questions. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, I'll second your thing. So, yes, All right. so we're, we're thank you. All right, see you. Thank all. you all in the audience.